Hello again, everyone. John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate, serving Southern Ontario, based out of the Niagara region. Thank you all for tuning in. This week, I'm going to get into my home buyer recipe or my updated home buyer recipe to kind of show you guys where we're at, how things are progressing. Now is not a good time, in my opinion, to jump into the market just yet, but uh, it's coming in the future, but we'll get into that. I have some statistics from across the country, just some early ones. Uh, Friday was the 1st of August. So, of course, a long weekend, so not too many boards or hardly any boards reported, but I do have some, so stick around for that. But first, I want to get into just a little bit of a history lesson and a comparison. So let's start back in 2012. In 2012, you could have got a brand new four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath house for 281000 in a nice area in Niagara Falls. This one's from 2016. It's an average house in the city. Raised bungalow, north end, good location, 280 grand. 2016, got yourself an average house. In 2019, that 280,000 or 279.9, as this listing shows, would have got you a townhouse. And in 2020, that 280 or so, this one's $285,000, would have got you a two bedroom apartment condo in Niagara Falls. Again, these are all good areas. And now we move on to today. This is not to insult anyone. I have no problem with any kind of house or dwelling where people live, but it's just for comparison to show you from 2012 to now what that same money gets you. Here in 2023, you get a trailer for $280,000 in Niagara Falls with lot fees that are more expensive than condo fees or maintenance fees on a two-bedroom condo. So I just wanted to shed some light or perspective on that affordability issue. In 2012, you would have a brand new home for 280,000 in a good area, four bedroom, three and a half, or sorry, two and a half bathrooms to today where you're gonna get a trailer. You can't even get a mortgage on a trailer. You have to pay cash or have a chattel loan or whatever the case may be. And your lot fees are gonna be you know, $600 a month or so. Moving on to some stats from Ontario and Alberta this week. Uh, Alberta, again, kudos. You guys uh, had your data out on the first and the rest I have access to. I've done things a little newer this week instead of reporting the sales and the new listings separately because you can't really see the perspective on those. I wanted to combine them to the sales to new listings ratio and take a look at Calgary there. So Calgary has been very active. It's an overheated seller's market. So there's almost as many sales as there are new listings. And uh, then you have Edmonton. Edmonton, the same thing, uh, not as bad. It's it's a seller's market, not a overheated seller's market. And of course, Cambridge in Ontario is also in the seller's market. The rest of these places in the gray, they are a balanced market. They're from 40 to 60% or so. The lower the number, the more favorable it is to buyers, obviously. But you can see they're all in the balanced market territory, except for Toronto, the city of Toronto, York, and Peel. They're all in buyer's market territory. Moving on to the month-over-month -month changes in the average price. Again, these are all for August, these statistics. The biggest month-over-month -month recorded loss was Kitchener-Waterloo area, down 6.6%. And of course, if you go down the list there, Berrien District down 6.2%, Oakville-Milton 4.8%, Toronto down 4.8%, Niagara, where I'm working out of, 4.7%, Hamilton-Burlington down 4.6%. Shout out to the Realtors Association of Hamilton Burlington. They had a mistake in their statistics. I posted something on Twitter, just I noticed it, and uh, they actually replied to me and they had fixed it. So uh, shout out to you guys for such a good follow up there. Guelph down 3.6%, Calgary down 3.2%, and Edmonton down 2.9%. So a very interesting stat there with Calgary. They're in a clear seller's market, an overheated seller's market, but their average prices still dropped 3.2% month over month. Not a small amount by any means. So uh, it kind of goes to show you that the interest rates are really biting when, you know, there's not enough supply, but the prices are still going down. And of course, the rest there you can see as we approach the bottom with Kingston and area having a 1.8% gain month over month. So looking at the percent change from the peak pricing, Kitchener-Waterloo leads the pack there with 25.4%. Almost all places in Ontario now, uh, except for a few, are over 20% losses again. 
Toronto is quickly approaching at 18.6, followed by Kingston in area, York, and so on. Calgary and Edmonton down 5.5 and 5.4% from their peak pricing. And looking at this in dollar terms, Oakville Milton leads the pack down 330,000 from their peak last year. And as you can see, most places are in that two to $300,000 price range. And for smaller areas like where I'm from in Niagara region, you know, they're around that 200,000 or just under, but uh, yeah, lots of them are back in that $200,000 price uh, losses at this point. And down at the bottom, Calgary and Edmonton, not huge uh, drops from the peak, but uh, they're still down twenty three and thirty thousand dollars. So moving on to my home buying recipe, I have talked about this many times in the past. There's four elements in my opinion and from my research that should be included. They are falling prices, falling interest rates, high unemployment, and high mortgage arrears or delinquencies. Once the stars align on these four things is when I say it's a good buying opportunity for those people waiting to get into the market that, uh, of course, struggle with, with affordability and what right now. This is not the bottom, mind you, but it is the start of some good buying opportunities, in my opinion. So filling in the blanks here, we have the falling prices. So we have a big check mark on that. The rest of them are headed in the right direction, but they're not there yet. Falling rates, of course, we don't have falling rates, but we had interest rate hikes and we should be close to the top and it will take some time for those rates to really take hold. They're already starting to take hold, but they're really going to start to bite. And at some point, the Bank of Canada is going to have to start cutting rates and that rate cutting cycle is when the home buying opportunities will start. The economy will be in trouble. And of course, you can buy, but we're not there yet. Higher unemployment or high unemployment you can see our unemployment in Canada is creeping up. It's by no means high right now, but it is going in the right direction. So that's a good sign. And of course, the high mortgage arrears and delinquencies are going to be closely tied to that high unemployment, which has still yet to come, but is trending in the right way. And of course, these banks in Canada are helping avoid this issue right now with their extended amortization and interest only payment schemes they have going on. So these things do take time, but like I said, they're headed in the right direction and it's just a matter of time. And of course, if you've read anything or heard anything in the news in the last week or so, the Canadian economy is unexpectedly slowing more than they thought. And the Bank of Canada is going to have a tough decision this week. Do they do another pause and deal with the impacts of that or the potential impacts? Or do they raise knowing that we could be and most likely are in a recession right now? Anyway, let me know again in the comments what you think, and until next week, I'll see you then.